Hi, I want to quickly show you how to make a pretty cool word cloud using uh, some data from Wall Street Bet. Please excuse any foul language here. I brought this in exactly how it was. Um, this is going to be a very efficient way to use NLTK library to create a word cloud. Um, we're going to use a function and this is going to be a uh, end result. So let's get started. I'm going to create a new or new workbook to show you how to do this from scratch. So let's go to new, new workbook, and let's bring in our essentials. So we need to bring in all the libraries that we want. So, so let's say, and we want to import pandas to bring in our uh, CSV. So pandas as, so pandas as PD. The first thing I want to be able to do is bring in uh, individual words. So chop up those sentences or comments into individual words. And we're going to use Natural Language Toolkit. So uh, let's, from NLTK.tokenize, import word tokenize. Now if you don't have the NLTK library installed, you, you need to do that before you uh, take on this because it's essential unless your words are already tokenized. Uh, then I want to remove any of the stop words which are articles, I's, the pronouns that are not going to be helpful in our analysis or in our word cloud. So I'm going to from nltk.corpus import stop words. Then I want to be able to rem get to the base word instead of having so many different versions of the same word depending on sentence tense and, um, and possessives and things like that. So I'm going to limitize the words. So from nltk. Um, stem. I'm going to import word net limitizer. Next, what I want to be able to do is definitely bring in matplotlib. So import And now we need to bring in the word cloud. So from word cloud, import word. And lastly, we, we need to be able to bring in that image so we can format the words around that image. So from PIL import image. And hopefully we haven't made any spelling mistakes. And we can run this. Yep, so there we have it. So let's bring in our data set. I'm bringing in a data set from Kaggle that has all of the Wall Street Bet comments. Um, I think it goes back quite far. You can check out the data set. So let's bring that in using pandas. So I'm just going to call that WSB and I'm going to bring that in. It's already saved on my PC. The name of it is, it's in my working directory, Reddit, WSB, uh, dot CSV. And let's take a quick look at the head of that data frame. So here's our data frame. It looks like it's starting from this year. I am going to focus on the title of the Reddit post instead of the body because there's a lot more work that needs to be done in the body. But just to show you how to make an efficient word cloud, let's focus on the title. There, we, what we want to do is be able to join all of these different words together instead of going through each one of these columns. I just want to show you how that's done. We want to be able to join 
these words together can easily do that by saying okay here's a space and I want you to join and we can call these our words and then from there we just want to bring in this column so WSB dot title but now you can see that everything is joined up and we can see all the emojis and the capitalization and a lot of different information there so let's make this easy so we can reuse this uh, some set of code using a function. I'm just going to eliminate this cell and then I'm going to put a few more spaces so we have some room to work and I'm going to create a function and we're going to call this clean DEF to specify the function and we're going to call this clean tokens and what we're going to be passing this is our a data in a sense and that data is going to be this column so then I am going to initiate the function by using this so the first thing we want to do is what we just did in the first step there to see those individual words so we want to create a space and we want to join and then we're going to pass join what we want to join the data that we're going to pass into this and then let's call that words like we did before and then the next part of this, I want to be able to tokenize those words. So get individual words instead of that big glob of words. So we're going to start with tokens and then we're going to tokenize this. So we're going to use uh, word underscore tokenize and then we're going to pass it. What are we going to pass it? We're going to pass it the words here. All right, and that's going to create individual words. And just to show you what it looks like, I'm going to say return, and we could just quickly see how those two steps happen. So return tokens. And if now we have a function, so there's our function, and all we need to do is call clean tokens function on D, uh, not DF, WSB dot title. I'll just show you what that produces. So now you can see we have those individual words. But of course we want to add more to this function because we have capitalization and we have these emojis we have to deal with. So let's add more steps to our function. So now we want to do tokens and we're going to start using list comprehension instead of four because we need to go through each one of these words in the list. So the first thing I want to do is lower the words instead of having all these capitalizations. So T dot lower. So I'm going to use the native function for strings T dot lower and then for oops T dot lower function for each word which is represented as, as this T in tokens all right so we're going to go through each one of these tokens and lower it let's go to the next step so tokens again we're resaving over that list and then i want to be able to remove the stop words so we want to say t for t in tokens so we want to be able to get each one of these t's and this is list comprehension you start with t for t in tokens if not in stop words which is what we brought in dot words and then we want to use the english stop words all right so that's going to remove all of the ands and does and other stop words let's add another step to this so tokens again we're resaving over because now we've gotten we've lowered we removed stop words and now we want to be able to remove some of these emojis because these are not going to help so we're going to do t 
for t in tokens if t and then we're going to do a function uh, is alpha alpha which is only going to bring back alphabetical words instead of when we won't have these emojis and now we want to be able to limitize our words so we need to bring in limitizer so let's bring that into our function limitizer equals word net limitizer and this is going to allow us to get to the base of that word so we just call that and now we can use that tokens equals and then we're going to use that function first limitizer dot limitize and then what do we want to limitize we want to limitize each one of those tokens in tokens so for t so t for t in tokens and that give us what we want so we'll be able to remove this, lower this, and remove the stop words, and only bring back alphabetical words. So let's run that function, and we have a issue. It says syntax error. So t for t in tokens, if not, but we need to say if t, if t is not, so not in stop words. And this is run, but we got a little bit of an error where it says we misspell limitize, which is here. So let's just fix that and rerun it. So now you see our output. We have a lowered set of words. We removed the stop words. So our function read, ran pretty well. So let's just save our information. So we return those tokens and let's just save this as a variable. I'll just resave this down here so we can have this just to view. So I'm going to create a few more cells. Well, let's, I don't want to repeat the same word. Let's call this new tokens. And then let's have our function there and we just save that. It's going to take some time to run again. So uh, keep that in mind after you save that over. But we can start continuing to create our word cloud. So this is gonna be our word cloud variable and then we're gonna use word cloud function. And now let's take a look at what this requires. And you can see all of the different things we need to add to it. And we have a lot of options. And this is just for the word cloud, but we still will need to use a different function to generate the word cloud. Well, not different. So let's do the minimum so we can see what is needed. So if I just use this function and use all the default variables, I can do generate. And generate is going to generate this word cloud. And I can pass it our new tokens and then in order to show this word cloud we need to use plt dot i am show so image show and then we're going to use word and let's take a look at that and then and we have a little error somewhere so now that we have these new tokens it will not take a list. It wants us to bring back all of these different words. And how do we do that? We rejoin it, the tokens. So we can't use new tokens. We can use our, let's call this our bag of words. And we can say dot join. So I'm going to use bow. And then what do I want to join? New tokens. So now that I have that, 
it's running and I'm going to add that here. So this is an additional step we can add to our function. So now that we've rejoined our words, we can start to create our word cloud. So let's run that. And now you can see our word cloud. And we have an access and we have a background. So these are all things we can change. So let's start optimizing what this looks like. So let's create a white background. So if we click this, we can see that we have all of these options. And we also have the max amount of words. And we can add in stop words also to this. So we see the, the default black background. Let's change that to white. And we can also change the density of words. So we can say max underscore words equals 1000 instead of the default. And you can see how this looks. So now you can see the background. We have a lot more words. We, of course, we can change the size. But we want to be able to create an image here. So we want to be able to bring in an image. So I'm going to create a step here and I'm going to say, give me a mask. So WBA mask. And then we need to pass in an array. And I think we forgot to import NumPy. So let's import NumPy as NP to use the array. And then we want to use image.open from our image and pass it our image. And I'm going to pass it a image that I can show you. Put that in quotations. Okay, so the file, the, the image is this one. The image is this one that I found on the net. So we want to be able to bring that in and all this black is where we're going to see where our word cloud is going to produce our words. Let's get rid of that. And you can bring in any black and white image. So in the word cloud, we have a parameter called mask. And then we're just going to add this mask there. So mask equals WSB.mask. And then we're going to run that again. And I'm going to show you what happens. Now, we do have something there that we can see. And we still have our margins. And we can get rid of the margins first before we handle this with our matplotlib plt. Oops. Axis. And then we want to turn that axis off. And then we want to get a bigger picture here before we start dealing with this. So we can always use the fig size, plt.fig size. And then we can use like a high resolution figure equals, let's say, 16 by 9. And if we run that, we can see a, we can see that the axis and the size of the image increase. And what matplotlib fig size? Up oh, fig. I have this backwards figure equals fig size. So now we see something here. 
but we don't see it very defined. And there's a very easy way you can fix this. And also we can remove this by adding a semicolon. Uh, I'm going to also a different color map. So I'm also going to add a color map and let's just start uh, indenting this a little bit so we can see more. Uh, and then I'm going to use a comma here and add color map, color map. And then you can get the matplotlib color map from uh, different places. I'm going to use this one. What else do we need? Oh, and to make this more defined, we need to use another thing called contour. So, oops, if you press shift tab and we open that back up, you can see there is a parameter called contour. And we have the contour color and then we have the contour width. We're going to change this from zero width equals two. And let's just we put that here. And let's run that and see what our result is. And color map. And then let's run that. And now we have the result here. Of course, you can change the black background color to any color you like. You can go back to black. But this is just a quick and easy way to create an awesome word cloud with the contours that looks pretty cool. Um, please leave a like or comment or share if you think this was helpful. If you want different types of tutorials, please leave that in the comment section. I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you.